Hi, I'm George, and this is part two of three saltwater fish you should totally avoid when first getting into the aquarium hobby. I released three saltwater fish you should totally avoid almost two years ago now, and it's become my most popular video with a quarter of a million views. The reason for this is that apparently the three saltwater fish that I chose ended up being pretty controversial. For all three fish that I chose, the mandarin dragonette, the six line wrasse, and all damselfish, about half my viewers agreed with these choices and about half my viewers disagreed in some way with these choices. So I'm doing this video to give you guys some more info as to why I chose the three saltwater fish that I did because I still stand by my choices. But there definitely are some exceptions and clarifications that I would like to make. Before I begin on each of these three fish, I just wanted to say a couple things. First, I'm sorry for the mispronunciations in the last video. And the second thing that a lot of you seem to miss was that that video was meant for beginners looking for their first saltwater fish. All three fish I mentioned are generally great fish for Aquarius you can definitely have success with all three of them. I got so many comments saying, I have this fish that you mentioned and it's doing great, what's the problem? The reasons that I chose these fish are pretty irrelevant to their hardiness. Here are the clarifications. Let's start with the Mandarin Gobi. Now this fish really isn't a Gobi, it's actually a type of fish called a Dragonette. I called it a Mandarin Gobi because a lot of beginners see this fish in books and online uh, with the name labeled as a Mandarin Gobi. So I thought a lot of you might recognize it as that. What it really comes down to with the Mandarin Dragon Net is that you need to do your research and ask the fish store uh, to feed the fish in the store before you buy it so you can figure out what it eats and whether you're gonna be able to care for its dietary needs before you buy it. Because now, a lot of captive bred mandarins will actually eat frozen food and won't be such picky eaters. Also, if you have a steady supply of copepods, you'll also be in good shape. But I was assuming in my first video that a lot of you beginners don't even know what a copepod is. I'm not saying that this fish is impossible to keep, but it is an extremely finicky eater, and in my opinion, would make an extremely poor choice as someone's first fish. Let's move on to the six line wrasse. A lot of people disagreed with this choice and I think it's because there is one exception. Six lines are quite aggressive and the reason I chose this as a bad fish was that most beginners choose a peaceful tank with peaceful fish. So if you're a beginner and you're just dying to have the six line wrasse, here's somewhat of an exception. And this goes for any aggressive fish, really. If you add the six line last to your tank, it has a way better chance of behaving more politely, but I still won't recommend it for beginners. And now for the most disputed fish that I chose, the damselfish. Here's a great question I got in the comments section of my first video. Nick Lang asks, if damselfish are not good fish, are clownfish good because they are damsels? This is a great question. The only clownfish that I would recommend to beginners as a great starter fish would be the Ocellaris clownfish, AKA Nemo. These are the exception. All other clownfish I would not recommend, like Maroons, Clarkies, uh, none of those due to their aggression. Another exception that can be made for damselfish are the blue slash green Chromis. These are peaceful and very, very cheap, so a lot of people recommend them as good starter fish. I personally wouldn't recommend this fish because they seem just to die easily, they don't seem very hardy, but because they're so cheap and disposable, lots of aquarists will recommend this as a good beginner starter fish. Damsels are also extra aggressive when they're kept alone or in pairs, which is why if you're a beginner, I would still avoid the damselfish. I hope this video helped clarify a lot of things. If you still have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'm also doing a part three to this video, which you can click on below. I'll put a link in the description where it's part three three saltwater fish that beginners should avoid with larger tanks. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos just like this one. Thanks for watching guys, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.